Hello everyone, welcome back to another MCR 3U1 video and in this video we will be going over section 4.3 on working with rational exponents continuing on chapter 4 um, of exponential functions. Here's the success criteria for this lesson. We want to explore rational exponents and learn how to work with them. We want to be able to evaluate um, expressions containing these rational exponents and learn how to switch from radicals to rational exponents. Let's go through the facts and theory um, to know while working with rational exponents and radicals as well and how to tie them together. Well, a number raised to, um, raised to a rational exponent is equivalent and can be written as a radical. And the blueprint is that if we have an exponent a rational exponent of 1 over n, this indicates the nth root of the base, aka the index. And we have the definition, the definition for the index down here, um, which is that it is a number left, it is the number left of the radical sign. Um, and it tells us which root is indicated. For example, if we have a 3, it is a cube root. If we have a 4, it is a fourth root, and etc. And if there's no number, then the square root intended, uh, then the square root is intended. So if we have uh, a root 4, this is a square root. So a 2 would be indicated here, but we don't put it. Uh, and of course, square root of 4 equals 2. If we want um, cube root of 8, we will put that 3 on the left side of the of the radical sign, and that's our index. And this, of course, would be equal to 2 as well. Um, and if we want a fourth root, we would do root and the 4 on the left side there. And if we want the fourth root of 16, which we know as well is 2, we would put that 4 here on the left side of that radical sign, and that's our index. And so if we go back to rational exponents, that index is going to be the denominator of a rational exponent. So let's continue back to the facts. If n is greater to 1, right, because if we, uh, we don't want an n uh, less than 0, sorry, uh, we don't want an n of 0 because it will give us, it will give us an, a 0 um, on the bottom of the fraction and it will give us an undefined exponent. And as well as if n is a element of all natural numbers, meaning of counting numbers, so 1, 2, 3, 4, if it's just a whole number, then b, which is our base number, to the power of 1 over n, which, are, uh, which is our rational exponent, will equal the nth root of that same base b. So as we can see here, the denominator of our exponent, which is over 1, right, because it's a natural number, so it's a whole number greater than 1 because we don't want it to be 0. Um, if And we also don't want it to be 1 because that'll just give us a b to the 1, which is just b, um, right? If b is to the power of 1 over 1, that'll just be b to the 1, which is just b. So we want a fraction there. Uh, so 1 to the n, b, b to the 1 over n will equal nth root of b. And if the rational exponent has a numerator, which is not 1, and uh, but is a value of m, a positive integer, if m and n are both positive integers, then b to the power of m over n, again, see now that uh, the numerator is not 1, it's m. Now this is going to equal the nth root of b to the power of m, which could also be, read, be written as b to the power of m and you take the nth root of that result and we have a restriction on b that b cannot be equal to zero but all we want to remember is that the denominator of our rational exponent will be our, our index and the numerator will be our, our exponent right so if you have b to the power of m over n it's going to equal n through to b to the power of m or b to the power of of m and take the nth root of that. Okay, let's do a quick example with the theory we just learned. So it says express in radical form and then evaluate 
49 to the power of a half, of negative a half. So we have 49 to the power of negative a half, and we want to evaluate this. So we see that we have a rational exponent, but this sum of rational exponents is negative. And if we remember what to do with negative exponents, we just want to say that this equals 1 over 49 to the power of 1 over 2. Whenever we have a negative exponent, we just want to put it at the bottom of a fraction of 1 over the base and to the positive exponent, right? To the positive version of the exponent, which is 1 over 2. So from here, we want to evaluate this using the rules we just learned. So if we have a 49 to the power of 1 over 2, then our n value is going to be equal to. Because remember, we said that b to the power of 1 over n equals uh, n to the root of b. So in this case, we have 1 over 2. So our n is going to be 2. So we should put it in the format of n, n to the root of b which is just going to be square root of 49. And we can take out the 2 because remember, if we don't put an index, if we don't, we don't write the actual number of the index, we are implying a square root. And from here, we can just take the square root of 49, which is 7. Because 7 times 7 is going to give us 49. And that's our answer, 1 over 7. Here we have another quick example. It says express in the radical form and then evaluate negative 27 to the power of 4 over 3. So in this case, we have a non uh, a numerator that is not 1 in our rational exponent. So our m value this time is going to be 4 and our n value is going to be 3. And our b value is going to be negative 27. Okay. So if we put it in the form of b to the power of m over n, this is going to equal, if we remember from the last slide, the nth root of n, sorry, the nth root of b all to the power of m or uh, nth root of b to the power of m. Okay, so we'll just use the first uh, version. So if we want to plug in our values, we have negative 27 to the power of 4 over 3. So if we put it in this format, we want to say that the nth root and n is going to be 3. So the, the cube root of b, which is negative 27, this all to the power of 4, which is the numerator of a rational exponent. And so now we just want to evaluate so the cube root of negative 27, it's going to be negative 3, still to the power of 4, because negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 is going to equal negative 27, because negative 3 times negative 3 is negative 9, times negative, uh, sorry, is positive 9, times negative 3 is negative 27. So if we continue... Now negative 3 to the power of 4 is just going to be negative 3 times negative 3, which is 9, times negative 3, which is negative 27, times negative 3, which is just 81. And that will be our final answer. So negative 27, negative 27 to the power of 4 over 3 equals 81. Now let's go over a couple of laws that we should know when working with the rational exponents and exponents in general, as, as exponent laws that apply to integer exponents also apply to rational exponents. The two laws that we are going to look at today are the, the product of powers law, uh, rule and the quotient of powers rule. So the first um, one we're going to look at is the product of powers rule. So if we have a number a, raised to the power of n multiplied by b also raised to the same exponent n, if we can combine the basis and raise the basis multiplied to the power of n. So if we have a to the n times b to the n, we can just simply say a times b all in brackets to the power of n. So we can combine the basis 
Um, this works with uh, both integer and rational exponents. And we could also go backwards and say that a times b, all in brackets raised to the n, is going to equal a to the n times b to the n. So we can split it up if we need to for a specific question. Then for the quotient of powers, if we have a, an ex uh, a base a raised to the exponent n divided by this time uh, b raised to the same exponent n, we can again join the bases and say that this equals a divided by b all in brackets raised to the power of n. And again, we could go backwards and say that a over n is the same, uh, a, sorry, a over b all in brackets raised to the n will equal a n divided by b n. And this could also be written as a n over b n, which will equal a over b n, which is actually easier to understand for me. So it might be for you if we put it into a fraction form like that. Last fact that we want to remember in this slide is that odd roots can have negative bases, but even ones cannot. This is because if we multiply a number by itself an even number of times, then the result will always be positive. So if we have, for example, negative three, if we multiply this number by itself an even number of times, the result will always, always be positive. So if we multiply by negative three, that's gonna be positive times negative three, there's three negatives, so that's gonna become negative. Then that, we're multiplying it by itself four times, so that's gonna be positive again. If we multiply it by itself six times, it's gonna be positive. So this, the root, and if we have, a, a, um, if we have a, an even index, for example, let's say six, we cannot have a negative number in here because there's no uh, base number that will multiply by itself an even number of times to get negative to get a negative number. Now, if we multiply a number by itself an odd number of times, then the result can be negative if the original number we are using is negative. So for example, if we have negative three again, but this time we multiply by itself, let's say three times, this is gonna give us negative 27. If we multiply it by itself five times, this is gonna give us 243 a negative 243. So we can have something like the fifth root of negative 243. This is gonna give us negative three. But if this is positive, obviously, this is just gonna give us positive three. But there is a possibility that this space inside of here, if we have a, a root with an odd index, this number can be negative. That's okay, this is not even. Okay, so we just wanna remember that. Okay, and let's do an example here to use the laws we have just looked at. It says express an exponent and then evaluate fifth root of negative 32 all over 243. So what we want to do here is first make this radical into a rational exponent. So what we want to do is put the fraction that is in the root in brackets so negative 32 all over 243, right? And put that to the power of one over five. Remember, um, an exponent, a rational exponent of one over n is gonna be the nth root. So the nth root this time is the fifth root. So our exponent is gonna be one over five. So if we use the uh, uh, power of quotients uh, rule that we just learned, then we can say that we can go backwards this time because before, remember, we had a n divided by b n equals a over b n. This time we can go backwards because we have a over b n and we need to go, we need to separate them to evaluate. So we want to say that negative 32 all over 243 to the power of 1 over 5 is the same thing as saying negative 32 the power of one over five all over 243 to the power of one over five. Now, if we put this back into radical form, it's gonna be the fifth root of negative 32 all over the fifth root of 243. 
And if we evaluate this, what, num what negative number multiplies by itself five times to get negative 32, this will be negative two, right? Because negative two times negative two is four, times negative two is uh, negative eight, times negative two is uh, 16, times negative two is 32. And the fifth root of 243, we actually just looked at it in the last page, it's gonna be three. So that is gonna be our final answer. Okay, and that is it for the video, guys. I hope you were able to understand everything well and make sure to keep practicing.